Well, what is up guys, this is RMD Tech and today we're going to be looking at the top 5 ways that you can improve the aesthetics of your PC. Now this video is mostly going to focus on budget PCs and how to make a budget PC look better, however many of these tips are going to apply to higher end, more enthusiast PCs as well. So without further ado, let's get into that video. So what we're going to do is follow through the exact same PC with every single step. As you can see, I've built a pretty crappy looking gaming PC and with each step we're going to change out a few different bits, improve little bits here and there just to make it look slightly better. So with each step it will be the exact same specs, however you might see I add something in, I take something out just to make it look a little bit better. And so we're going to get started with step number one. Starting off with our first tip, it's also our cheapest and easiest tip, cable management. It can turn even the ugliest jungle mess of cables into a reasonably well presented and well built looking gaming PC. So whilst you won't be winning any beauty awards with this PC, it will at least look like it's had some sort of love and care taken when building it. Adding on to step 1 is step 1.5. If you don't already have fan filters, then this problem is going to be a lot worse for you. And that's dust, dirt and grime. If your PC is full of dust and dirt, it looks unloved and it doesn't look very well kept. And so what I'm going to recommend is taking some antibacterial wipes and cleaning out your fans just to make them look like they're still new and they haven't been sat in the cupboard for five years before putting them in your PC. Now, obviously you can't apply this step on your motherboard because really antibacterial wipes on your motherboard, I don't think that's a very good idea. Instead, I'd recommend using something like compressed air so that you're not just rubbing liquid all over your motherboard and potentially causing some significant damage. Step number two is actually going to involve spending some money. But if you're lucky like me, you'll have a shop similar to Poundland, probably like dollar land, I don't know, I don't live in America, where you can pop along, buy yourself some grey or black primer and then get yourself some matte black spray paint. And if you haven't already guessed, this is for painting your cables. Many cheaper power supplies and cases will have cables that are just yellows, blacks, greens, whites, but just don't match the rest of your system. But black is a colour that fits almost every single system. And so if you can pick up some primer and some black spray paint fairly cheap, then what you can do is go outside, get yourself your little goggles and your face mask and then start spray painting your cables. Now as you can see here what I've done is I've gone ahead and covered up my power supply so that none of the spray paint is going to get inside and touch any of the internal components. I've done this with kitchen roll, you can do it, use pretty much anything that's going to stop the spray paint from getting inside. Now start off by using the primer. Now don't do what I did here, I've clearly made a mistake and don't start by spraying onto the cable, start by spraying to the side and then going across the cable. Once the primer has dried, go ahead and add your matte black spray paint and continue to repeat these steps until you're happy with the amount of coats that you've got. And now that I have the power supply back in the system, you can see it actually looks far better. It's much easier to hide the cables and even the ones that are on show, they don't look anywhere near as bad because they match the same colour as the case. And black blends in fairly well with pretty much anything unless you have a white case, but even then it looks fairly decent because they're complete opposites. Step number three is reasonably controversial because not everyone likes RGB. However, as a fan, I felt I had to include it. Now, whilst the majority of people already recommend RGB fans or RGB LED strips, I thought, well, everyone already knows that. So what doesn't everyone already know about? RGB RAM heatsinks. These are actually reasonably cheap to pick up, costing about 12-ish pounds per RAM stick. And what it allows you to do is take your existing RAM sticks, whether they have a heatsink or not, whether they're low profile or not, and give them that RGB flare. So what you have to do is if you already have heat sinks on your RAM sticks, go ahead and take those off. Then take apart these RAM sticks with the included screwdriver and then use the tape that's included to attach them to your RAM sticks and they sort of act as a heat sink at the same time. So they sort of provide better cooling, but in reality it doesn't really matter. And the main thing here is they're giving you that RGB flare. Now if your motherboard doesn't have an RGB controller on board, you don't have a port that allows you to plug these in, then you can go ahead and pick up an RGB controller fairly cheaply as well. I'm using another one from a CASA. And then what that will allow you to do is give yourself that little RGB flare. And I personally think that that adds a really big thing to your system. So yes, you can go ahead and add RGB fans and RGB LED strips. However, personally, I thought I'd recommend these because not many people know about them. 
for tip number four, we're going to go ahead and invest about £30 into a brand new case. I'm going to recommend the CIT7, however, the choice of case is entirely up to you. The reason I'm picking the CIT7 is because, as far as I'm aware, it's the cheapest way to get the tempered glass look without actually having to invest in a case that provides tempered glass. The CIT7 uses a Perspex side panel which mimics the look of tempered glass, and in my eyes it does look pretty good. Whilst it's not a perfect replica, it does still provide more or less the same look, and I'm not entirely sure how it turns out on camera, but in person it certainly is pretty much there, providing more or less the look and you're really sacrificing very little here. So whilst it isn't gonna feel as good and it's definitely nowhere near as heavy, it's probably a bit more durable, even though it is probably easier to scratch. Now, of course, the case does have to make some sacrifices. For example, the front IO really isn't fantastic. It feels incredibly plasticky and you're not even going to get in a USB 3.0. Not only that, but this case only supports up to an MATX sized board. You won't be able to fit a full ATX sized board in here. So if you have a full ATX sized motherboard, you're gonna to have to go and invest in a different case. However, the case does definitely have some plus points other than the side panel. For example, it does come with a 120 millimeter RGB fan in the rear, which I think looks pretty good. It also has some RGB lighting in the front in the shape of a 7, hence the name, and I think that also looks incredibly good, especially at the price point, I personally wouldn't be asking for much more. Just comparing the looks of this case previously to how it looks now, I think this case has made a humongous difference in the way the PC looks, and IMO, it's definitely worth the investment. Step five is definitely my favorite step and could quite possibly be your favorite step as well. If you haven't already, head down into the description to click the link to go ahead and enter my international giveaway where you can win some of the RGB products that I mentioned in this video, including these RGB RAM heat sinks, these exact ones that I'm holding here, as well as some RGB LED strips and the RGB controller that you need to hook it all up. If you haven't done that already, go down into the video description, click the link and get entered, and then go ahead and leave a comment letting me know that you've entered and why you think you should win. But in all seriousness, if you guys do want a serious step five, whilst I haven't actually shown it in this video, what I'd probably recommend is going ahead and changing your CPU cooler. Whilst you may not need it for temperature purposes, it does make a significant difference in terms of aesthetics. As you can see in this PC, I'm using the stock Intel heatsink, which doesn't look particularly good. However, if you were to change to say a Corsair AIO or a Acasa AIO, thank you for Acasa for helping me out with this giveaway. If you change to an AIO, then potentially you can get much better looks in your PC. Whilst it does cost a significant amount of money, more so than the case or any of the RGB products I've mentioned, it does add that little bit of extra good lookingness so that you can make your PC look great. So if you did enjoy that video, please do be sure to leave a like so I know you enjoy this type of content and leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts if they're probably more complicated than just a like or a dislike. If you've got a friend that you think could probably benefit from some of these tips, do be sure to share this video with them so that they can learn some of the most important tips for making their PC look even better in 2019.